Hello, and welcome to the How to Make a Podcast podcast. My name is Casey Ruff from Boundless Body LLC, and I am the host of Boundless Body Radio. Before October of 2020, I was not a podcaster. Now, I have recorded hundreds of episodes featuring incredible guests, created tons of helpful content, and have consistently generated thousands of downloads every month since I began. I'm just a regular dude trying to share our message, and now I'm ready to show you my process, my successes and failures, and everything I've learned along the way to help you start your own podcast. Together, we'll explore the entire process of having a podcasting idea and take it all the way to publishing your first episode and explore all the steps in between. Then I'll give you all the tools that you will need so you can record as many episodes that you want to release after that. Podcasting is one of the most enriching skills I've ever added to my life. And I've learned a ton by talking with some of my heroes and sharing it with anyone who wants to join us on our journey. So sit back, grab a notebook, take some notes, and welcome to the How to Make a Podcast podcast. Hello, hello, this is Casey Ruff, and welcome to episode two of season two of the How to Make a Podcast podcast. Today, we are speaking with Scott Mazinski. Scott is an amazing friend of mine, and he is the owner and host of Carnivore Cast. That's one of our favorite podcasts, and it's been incredibly successful. It's normally always in the top 100 nutrition podcasts on Apple. He does such a great job with how he manages everything and the guests he brings on. It's just incredible, really great show. Scott was hosted on our primary podcast twice, so be sure to check out his amazing story on episodes five and episode 42 of Balanced Body Radio. Scott Mazinski, welcome to the How to Make a Podcast podcast. Thank you, Casey. Honored to be here, and thanks for the kind introduction. Um, you always give the best introductions, and I'm very excited um, for your new show. Yeah, thanks, man. Um, kind of, kind of fun idea. It was not something I was yeah. planning on doing. I, I didn't want to do this. It just kind of the idea came, and I decided <laughs> to do it. I'm sitting next to a notebook that I've kept for a few years. So it's got like how to pull up certain reports at the place I used to work, and then it has all the notes I took at Low Carb Denver 2020 before the world blew up. Uh, <laughs> it's got a record of all like accounting stuff of like sessions I was doing during the pandemic, and I have here uh, last summer the notes from my call with you. Um, you were kind enough to chat with me when I was thinking about podcasting and I wanted to go through some of the nuts and bolts with you. <laughs> <laughs> and I still have those. You were a very big part of, you know, doing the podcast that we do on Boundless Body Radio and such an amazing person to follow. So just thank you so much for all the help that you've given me. Um, it's been really awesome. Oh, that's awesome. Well, I, I mean, I'm so glad I've thoroughly enjoyed Boundless Body Radio and uh, the student becomes a teacher because I've learned a lot from you about podcasting and interviewing. So thank you for that, Casey. Well, sure. It's been such a fun journey. And yeah, I'm so glad that we've been able to do that together. was hoping to get you on today to just talk about your process and some of the things that you do. One of the primary things that we talk about, and I think, I, in my opinion, the most important is considering why. What What is your why? What is the reason why you decided to do a podcast? Um, and, and why it was a podcast to begin with and not something else like a book or, you know, a blog or something. Mm, yeah, good question. Um, and I think my why has changed over time. Uh, initially, you know, I was a carnivore, of course, uh, back in, starting back in 2016 and the podcast didn't start till 2018, I think, um, and I, I was looking for a sense of community. I wanted to connect with people. I wanted to share back. I wanted to, you know, I wasn't in it for fame or anything like that. And I'm not trying to be artificially humble, but honestly, I, I just wanted to be able to talk to some of these people um, like, you know, Amber O'Hearn and Sean Baker and the like. And um, a podcast is a great excuse to, to get to have those types of conversations with people. And, you know, I, I've always been a big podcast fan myself. I had listened to them extensively since, you know, going back to 2014 even. Um, and I, you know, my, my wife, girlfriend at the time was always encouraging me um, to start one. And I always said, no, 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 there are plenty of podcasts out there that interview all the people I would want to talk to anyway. And she pushed me and she pushed me. And, you know, eventually I, I decided, Hey, you know what? There isn't a podcast specifically about carnivore. Um, there's a lot of keto podcasts who interview carnivore people, but 
there isn't one and why why don't i give it a shot you know i'll do three episodes see how it goes i'll invest the absolute minimum to get it stood up and um yeah it just i i I loved it and it took off from there and you know i've kept doing it because um of the amazing feedback i get from people of you know i i think actually what's most touching the personal messages are fantastic um but even more meaningful for me is when i have a guest on and they forward me messages they get um that they've heard from audience members who said, Hey, I heard your story and it absolutely changed my life. Or I'm going through this rough patch and I related to you. That is really awesome because that's exactly what I want to do. I want to highlight other people's stories and I give them a forum, um, to, to reach other people and give them hope or, or make them question things or help them learn. And so that's what keeps me doing it. Mm. Wow, I love that. It's cool that your why has changed over time and they, that you recognize that and that you're okay with that. Um, yeah. I think it's a really wonderful reason why. So how do you, what what metrics tell you that you're being successful? Do you look at certain objective metrics or is it more just subjective mm. when people send you those messages? Yeah, it's more subjective. Um, I mean, I, I the only time I really look at my views is when uh, – somebody wants to advertise on my podcast and they ask how many downloads um, or listens I'm getting. Uh, You know, the feedback I like is, um, you know, direct messages to me or those types of messages from my guests or, um, you know, any, any types of emails or shares or things like that. That's, that's what I, I thrive off of. And that's, that's the feedback that tells me that, um, it's having some, some type of an impact. So no, you're not looking at downloads. That's not the primary factor. The, the amount of money you make from sponsors, which I know isn't as much as people think, um, you, you were, yeah. you were true to, you know, making impacts on people's lives. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Wow. That's, uh, that's what it's all about. Yeah. I love that. Um, I, I wonder if you could give, give a label to the type of resistance that you were facing when you were getting started. Would you say that it was like kind of an imposter Mm. syndrome kind of thing? Yeah, it was an imposter syndrome kind of thing. And also kind of just general laziness and procrastination, which sometimes can just be a mask for, for those deeper insecurities and imposter syndrome. Mm. Interesting. Okay. So, so let's talk about your process. And I want to start this by saying, I really specifically wanted to talk to you, not only because I love talking to you and you helped me out so much throughout the years, but in a way, I think you are a real savage in the way that you do things because you do like to be as minimal as possible and you still put out Mm. a fantastic show. And I really want to highlight that, that you consciously choosing to do things minimally is okay. So take us through a little bit of the things um, that you include in your process. Yeah. um, And I think, um, I think keeping barriers to entry for yourself and for others low is um, really important. And I'm a huge advocate of that. And if you want to spice it up or you want to make the premium version later, you can always do that. Uh, But start with something that you know you'll be able to stick to and be consistent about. I think that's essential. So for me, what that means is, um, you know, I I record all my podcasts on Zoom. Don't use any fancy software. Um, Don't use any type of mixers or anything like that. I just want originally even use Skype. (laughs) <laughs> which people hated, Ugh. but I put up with for like way too long um, to record my interviews. Um, <laughs> thank you, you know, pandemic, I, I, and thank you, Zoom. <laughs> yeah, thank you. And then, um, you know, I, I so my, my process, I'll give some, I won't go through the whole process unless you want me to, um, but some other ways in which I simplify it is, you know, I don't do any clipping or, you know, NPR podcast style editing. Um, unless a guest specifically says, Hey, I really want to make sure we take this part out. Um, but you know, I will run the whole thing long form. Um, I'll crop I'll, and then I, I have an editor, um, overseas, um, who essentially, you know, for $15 an episode, he's fantastic. Julian, um, he's, he's the lifeblood of the podcast. He will improve the audio quality. He'll clip in the intro and outro. He made the intro and outro. Um, with a little bit of music and fading and, um, he'll clip that in every time when I, where I tell him to. And then if I have any ads, he'll clip those in where I tell him to. 
and I just ship it to him and he does all of that. I could, I could edit the episodes myself. I could do that, but you know, I made a conscious decision that I wanted to outsource that and make it as easy as possible for myself. And then, um, you know, I don't do a lot of special promotion around the podcast. I basically said, I'm going to set up social media accounts. I'm going to really focus on one, which is Instagram. And then, you know, I don't really post at all on Facebook or Twitter. Things get pushed out to those. Um, and, you know, I post an episode, it goes there. And then the one other place I, I decided to post because it's, and this is like the only reason my podcast more, has more than 100 all-time downloads <laughs> is because these carnivore Facebook groups exist, um, which at the time I started, there were like four of them, which each had about 10,000 members. Now they each have like a hundred thousand members or something like that. And there are even more of them. And so I post the podcast there and that's how, you know, I got a lot of my audience and how it gets shared. Um, and those, those small things, um, you know, having that editing service, posting to Facebook, focusing on only really one social media account, which has been Instagram. Those have been the keys to my quote unquote success, if you can call it that, um, or what has worked well for me. And then the last thing is, you know, I try to keep my interview style really minimal. People, I think, can... Uh, preparation is great. Preparation for interviews is fantastic. You should do some preparation. But focus on the parts of the preparation that are really essential. Um, one, inter like introducing your guests. You do a great job. This. Introducing your guests gets them way more comfortable, particularly when you're interviewing people like me who have sometimes never been on a podcast before have a great intro for them that makes them feel confident and, um, you know, they'll reciprocate it and wanting to share more. Um, let the guests talk, shut up. You know, I always say the podcast isn't about me. The podcast isn't meant to be what is Scott eating this week or Scott voicing his opinions. I, I like to do that more when I'm interviewed. Um, but it's really about the guests. So let them speak. I try to almost never interrupt my guests and ask really open-ended questions to let them go. And, you know, I've invested a little bit in audio quality. I, I used to use a, for the first two years of the podcast, I used like an ATR 4100 or whatever, the Tim Ferriss mic, which is like 40 or 50 bucks on Amazon. Um, more recently, I've started using a headset just because my wrist got tired of holding that mic the whole time and I couldn't find a stand that worked. What? You would hold um, it? Yeah, I wow. would, I, for the first like three years, I held a microphone <laughs> for every interview. Wow. Um, yeah, it just shows you like how set in my ways I am and how like lazy I am to tr to change and try anything new. But yeah, those those small pieces, I think, have provided the most leverage in terms of making the podcast work for me. Wow. No, that's great. That's such great advice. Let's make sure we tag Julian in the show notes. He's actually helped me oh, yeah. out before. Um, I do all my own editing and processing. I use, um, you know, a simple online software program that allows me to do it without too much of a learning curve, but I've had, you know, yeah. zoom issues and things where I've had to send him files and he's really helped me for a very fair price. It's cool that he did your music and did he, did you say he did your logo as well? He did not do my logo. Um, I made my logo on Canva, which took like way too long and I created a really crappy version. If you go to a certain, maybe if you go to Apple podcasts or certain sites, it has my old logo, which is like pretty basic and bad. That took me and my wife, like a few hours to make. And then, uh, for a birthday gift, actually my in-laws, they got, um, one of my wife's cousins works for custom Inc and she's a graphic designer. And so they had her design a new logo, um, which is my current logo, which I really, really like. Gotcha. Yeah, I'd love it. Um, what, what, how did the music work? Was it just open source music that he found or did you have to pay for it? No, it was a free track. I don't even remember where I got it. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Well, what a great job of making things so simple. I, we talk about this a lot, interrupting your guests. I can't stand it in podcasts where you can't tell who the guest or who the host is. Um, mm. So I really love that part. That, and, and you do a great job. I mean, I know I know. recently you had an interview where you maybe planned out, I think you told me originally like 10 questions is pretty standard for the length of time that you're shooting for. You, you may kind of have some notes around those questions and what you might answer, but you realized pretty early on that the guest was going to take up a lot more time and you needed to kind of prioritize maybe like two questions. Yeah. Absolutely. 
Mm. Yeah, great to kind of flow with your guests in that way, and you do such a good job of that. Um, Thanks. So, so I want to talk a little bit about the editing. You're not going in and editing anything unless the person asks you to. Like, you're not editing out ums or awkward pauses in conversation, anything like that. No, I'm not. And um, the podcast would definitely be better if I did those things. <laughs> but uh, again, I really just wanted to minimize the barrier to entry um, and the barrier to p- putting out a podcast. And that's allowed me even during, you know, busy, crazy times, it's life, work, crazy life events for over three years. And I put out an episode every single week. So um, that's allowed me to be consistent. Yeah, that's amazing. I also noticed that your podcasts come out at the exact same time and the exact same day every single week. So I expect it at that certain time. Can you talk about why the consistency is so important? Yeah, um, that's interesting. I haven't really thought about it that much. Um, I just try to make it like part of my weekly rhythm. And and that's kind of how I live my life in general. I like things to be very similar day to day and week to week. I like consistent daily routine um it just makes requires less willpower and less conscious effort to do things and plan things um and so yeah it's always been for me um to usually it it was at one point wednesday morning now it's tuesday morning i try to put it out um i have my flow of how i put it out that's probably the one part of my process that is really not well automated, not well streamlined actually is publishing the actual episode. It's it's quite manual, um, from my perspective. Um, but yeah, I try to carve out 30 to 45 minutes every Tuesday morning to, to push that out. Um, and yeah, that's just been, that's been the daily habit to be, to be honest with you. Um, you make me nervous when you say, I know it's coming out the same time every week. Cause Dude. I'm like, Oh no, I'm going to let him down now. Uh, you are going to ruin my life. If I wake up on a Tuesday and I don't yeah. see that red square pop. Yeah. Up. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I think actually, uh, today I got an email from one of my, um, sponsors who said they're running a promotion starting November 1st. And I was like, Oh, November 1st is not a Tuesday. And I'm putting out your episode like Tuesday before. So I think I'm going to have to delay that one. Gotcha. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, that's how it, it just has naturally fallen. Gotcha. Um, how many, this is one of the questions that I asked you when I was asking for help, but yeah. how many scheduled out guests and episodes do you have that are just kind of waiting and, and, and does that fluctuate? Um, mm. do you have 10 or 30 or what, what is that number? Yeah, it certainly fluctuates. I don't like it to get below. I really don't like to start a week and not know what I'll be publishing next week. Um, So I like to have at least that level of planning ahead. Um, And usually what the way it works is I've gone through periods where it has fluctuated from batching like two episodes to up to maybe like seven or eight episodes. Mm. Um, I do feel bad when I batch too many because then, you know, that means somebody has to wait like, two months or even more for their episode to come out, which isn't a great experience for the guest. Um, right now, the way it works realistically is I get to a point where I, uh, I'm running low, <laughs> um, which will probably happen in like, I'm looking at my schedule right now <laughs> in like three <laughs> weeks time, I'll be like kind of low on guests mm. and I'll probably reach out to like five people and, um, uh, try to get them on the books and try not to schedule them all for the same week. I'll probably try to schedule them like further out. Um, actually maybe now I'm thinking about it. I'm starting a new job in in three weeks. Maybe I'll try to record some before that. Um, that's it. So yeah, that's, that's kind of how I think about not a ton of foresight goes into it, but I do like to have, um, at least a bit of planning and actually, um, taking on ad sponsors has required me to plan more. Um, cause I ha- have to say, you know, I, I'm committing to running their ad every other week. Um, let me make sure I have a guest ready for every other week. Um, so that's, that's actually been helpful. Well, I'm so glad we captured all of that and recorded all of that. You going through the process of thinking out, <laughs> checking your schedule. That's really important, dude. Like that's, yeah. that's something you have to keep in mind. Starting a new job is a huge thing. And yeah, this 
podcast yeah. is really important, but like you have other life priorities and you know, mm. you have to do different Definitely. things. I'm so glad we got to kind of be in your head a little bit on um, <laughs> that process. I love that. How are you reaching out to people? What is a standard thing for you to get new guests? Yeah. So, um, it's a mix. A lot of times people will reach out to me and want to come on or past guests I've had will want to refer other people. They'll say, Hey, you should really have so-and-so. And And I almost always say yes. (laughs) Um, (laughs) so that's, uh, not an exercise in prioritization or, um, you know, being very deliberate, but, um, it works because, you know, my podcast is fundamentally about storytelling and people's stories and everyone has a story. So that kind of works. Um, also, you know, if I know I want to have a certain guest on or back on like Linda Salant, one of our, our, our favorites, um, I'll reach out and say, Hey, Linda, we haven't spoken in a while. I'd love to have you back on the podcast. I'll usually DM her. Uh, I usually use Instagram for most of my communication with guests and I'll say, um, you know, any, any idea what you'd like to talk about, or, you know, I'll, I'll have listened to her on your podcast or another podcast and say, Hey, you know, I I heard you talk about this topic. I'd love to dive into that with you. Is there anything else you'd like to talk about? Um, and more and more so lately, I've been, um, asking my guests what topics they want to do. Um, previously I had like always proposed topics because I thought it was like taking, um, some of the like planning burden off of them. Um, but I, now I, I try to kind of open it up more and, and see what they're interested in talking about. Um, and yeah, that's, that's typically how outreach works. I'm so glad you mentioned that. That's something that I've been doing as well. You know, sometime in the days leading up to the conversation, I'll send a confirmation email and just say, Hey, look, you know what I'll, I'll say it like you did, like, what do you want to talk about? Is there a topic you definitely don't want to miss, or, mm. you know, I'll say something like, and this is true, like a big priority of, of ours on boundless body is I want to make a podcast that hasn't been made yet. You know what I mean? Mm. Like, I think it happened mm-hmm. during the, the Sean Baker episode. We interviewed Sean Baker, huge honor, like amazing, oh, yeah. amazing dude. Amazing. Story. Such a great episode. Yeah, it was great, but it was every interview that Sean Baker's ever done. Like there was not a big yeah. distinction. You kind of get this feeling of like, dude, he's, he's done eight of these today. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like <laughs> this isn't, we didn't create anything unique or tell a story that wasn't, wasn't told somewhere else. Like it was a very pedestrian and average podcast. And it was, again, it was a right. huge honor, but it's a real challenge with some of these people. And so one way I'll phrase it almost always is what is something that you feel is under told or a message that is like something that's like burning that you really want to tell people right now? Like what's important to you now? Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I I really like that frame. Mm. We'll also say like with our guests, we want to make sure that we're creating something that you would be very proud to share with your family, um, your friends, Mm. people in your life. So it kind of transfers the burden of I'm doing this podcast, I'm advertising, but I'd rather make something that that person feels as unique and they would like their friends and family to listen to because, you know, they're people too. And I feel like you do such a great job of that with your podcast. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Absolutely. I want to talk about sponsorships. We are not monetized on either one of our podcasts. I may monetize this one at some point. Um, Mm -hmm. Boundless is my passion project, and I will never monetize that one. Um, Might monetize this one down the road. But um, explain that process for people, because you you did this very organically, and I thought it was very Mm -hmm. well done. So can you tell us a little bit about the story of monetization? Yeah, absolutely. And and I'm an open book. Um, I, for the longest time, said I will never have sponsors. I will not um, sell anything. I will not um, make this monetized because for a few reasons. One, I just wanted to kind of keep it pure. Um, two, you know, again, going back to reducing the administrative burden. And three, um, you know, I realized that I, I'm never going to be a professional podcaster. <laughs> as much as we would both like to be, um, podcasting doesn't even come close to paying the bills. So it, it was just, you know, if, if it's not going to make a substantial difference in my outcome, but it's going to potentially detract from the podcast and potentially um, make it harder for me to produce the podcast, then I don't want to do it. That changed because um, a friend, Richard, um, who runs Optimal Carnivore, a supplement company, he reached out to me um, 
maybe a year or so into Carnivore Cast um, before the company existed. And he was just, you know, a serial entrepreneur living um, the, the remote entrepreneur lifestyle in Thailand. Um, and he asked for a Skype call and asked for my feedback on, on a product idea. I said, okay, sure. And we got to talking and we, we talked for a while about, um, you know, what, uh, what, what he was thinking around a product for the carnivore community. Um, and I gave some feedback, I gave some ideas and input on, on what I thought, um, would make a good product, what would be helpful, what I liked and disliked about other organ supplements. And he, he, uh, he took it to heart and like to his credit a year later, he came back and he's like, I have this product. It's ready to go. Business has stood up. We manufactured it. Like, can I advertise on your podcast? And I was like, wow, yes. <laughs> like, this is perfect. Like I helped in a small way, um, formulate, or at least I was consulted on this product. I, I kind of have to, you know, promote it to my audience because I really believe in it. And, you know, I, I use the product every single day. My wife uses it every day. We take it. Um, and we get sent so much of it from Richard because he's so generous that I, I thought it would make sense. And, you know, he asked me what, what he, what I would like to charge for podcasting rates. And I think I quickly Googled, um, you know, podcasting ad rates and they, they gave a calculation of per thousand downloads, you know, this much for a 30 second pre-roll ad, this much for a 60 second mid-roll ad, this much for a 60 second post-roll ad. And so I sent those to him and my download numbers. And he said, yep, sure, that works. And didn't change pricing at all for, um, you know, two years. We just ran with that. And he sponsored every single episode. And it was fantastic. And, you know, I also shared the product on my Instagram, not because he asked me to, but because I use it and I thought it would be nice. And um, he got a lot of business from that. It's really helped him, which has been awesome. And, you know, from time to time, other supplements and other companies that wanted to advertise would reach out to me. And, you know, my general philosophy was no, um, if you want to send me some of the product, I'm happy to try it. I'll share it on my social media accounts, but I don't really want to run ads for anyone else. One, I'm lazy. I don't want to record another ad. <laughs> Two, um, I, I don't necessarily believe in these products. Um, I don't want to be pushing something on my audience that I wouldn't personally use. Um, and you know, those inquiries kept coming and coming and coming. And so finally, you know, I, I, I started saying, Hey, you know what? Um, double what, what Richard is paying. me. Let's just see if anyone will pay them. And a lot of companies said, yes. And I said, Hey, are there any companies I actually really want to work with? And, um, you know, I listened to Mark Bell's power projects. I love Mark Bell. I love that show. And uh, they have LMNT as a sponsor and, and Piedmontese. And so I reached out to them and LMNT was like, yeah, we'd love to work with you, like share your numbers. And they agreed to the higher rate. And so I was like, fantastic, I'll, I'll, I'll work with you. And that's been a great relationship. And, um, you know, I was very happy with that. And I wasn't planning on changing anything. And then more and more companies reached out. And uh, my good friend, Vanessa Spina, ketogenic girl, um, she introduced me to Bioptimizers, um, which is a digestive enzyme and um, supplement company, a lot of products geared towards keto and carnivore folks. And, you know, I've had a lot of problems with my digestion. Enzymes have really helped me. And a lot of my listeners do as well. I get reached out to them by all the time about enzymes and, and digestion. And so I said, yeah, I don't really want to do this, but because of the administrative burden thing, but the product makes sense, double my rate again. And they said, yeah, we'll take it. I was like, oh, wow, wasn't expecting that. Wow. So now I have three sponsors. <laughs> um, and that's kind of how, how it's evolved over time. Um, and again, like the money is not substantial at all. I want to like, make that very clear. I'm not like rolling in it. I'm not doing well from the podcast. Um, but it, it's enough to like cover my costs and like, you know, have enough income to be able to like donate some more here or there you know, buy a present for a friend or my wife or my parents. And that's fantastic. And, um, you know, it, uh, similarly, like Bell Campo reached out and they, they offered a great sponsorship opportunity. I worked closely with them for maybe six months where they were basically giving us basically all of my meat, my wife's meat and our dog's meat was oh, free. Man. Um, it was a pretty sweet deal, but you know, they, they're now reevaluating their, their program. 
Um, and so that's a little bit on pause, but you know, overall it's been fantastic working with it, all these companies. And, um, yeah, I, my general advice would just be like, you know, think about who you really want to work with it, set your price high, um, and make sure you're doing it in an honest and high integrity way that, um, you can look back on and, and be happy about. Mm. Man, that is so well explained. I don't think there's a right or a wrong way to do this. And I don't judge anybody yeah. who wants to make money on this stuff. And there's sure. there's a lot of um there's a lot of websites that you can go to actually. I, I can't remember off the top of my head, but you can Google this, that it is just for um monetizing your podcast. And and you can choose hmm. any company on this list and they'll yeah, give you the price. Yeah, for those advertisements. And I think that's fine. But I just I just want to I, I want to explain the difference. I, I listen to a, a podcast every day that's about stoicism and it will be cut into to have a minute long ad about LinkedIn or something. It's completely unrelated and I find yes. it a little annoying and distracting where what you're describing is really just promoting the products and services that you love that benefit you. You talk about it in your own voice. It's very sincere. That's a totally different experience as a listener. I really appreciate your approach a lot more than I appreciate people who are clearly just doing this for the money. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate that. And you know, everyone has to make a living. Um, so like, I, I totally agree with what you're saying. And, and it, it, I don't like when people have just like totally generic unrelated ads. Um, but also I understand that like some people that they need to do that, like to pay the bills or for their family or whatever. So sure. I don't, I don't, I try not to judge. Sure. Yeah. And, and again, it's, it's you finding ways to help people and bridge the gap. If somebody needs digestive enzymes, like that's really, really helpful. And it's true sure. to your why. If tying it back into what we first started talking about that that totally fits in to your why and this is the example we use in the show all the time but like you and shauna getting together at 2 p.m in the afternoon to drink wine and talk about crazy cats like if you want to monetize that show that might be a little bit tougher if your why is all about downloads rather than reaching out to other ladies who like to drink wine and talk about cats you know what i mean right right yeah that's awesome. I, I want to bring this up. I think this is super important. Um, I want to talk about the second podcast that you decided to do. Um, can you tell us mm. about the Making a Man podcast? Yeah, absolutely. So um, something like six months ago, I got the idea of wanting to start another podcast. Um, more and more so, I found myself, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm coming on 30. And, um, you know, I'm asking a lot of questions about, you know, when do I want to start a family? Do I want to be a dad? How do I think about my career? How do I think about failure? How do I think about being vulnerable? Um, relationships, mental health, body image, all these things. And I wanted to have those conversations with people who had gone through those experiences or were experts, you know, male, male role models who were willing to be very vulnerable and expose themselves. Um, and that's kind of what gave me the idea for making a man. Um, and I started it and I had some great guests. I recorded uh, nine or 10 episodes. Um, but honestly, I, I kind of lost interest in it. Um, partly, you know, I felt like I was getting answers to or engagement on those topics in other ways, either through conversations with friends, family, colleagues, or, you know, podcasts or books I was listening to. And I didn't like the way I was, I didn't like the way I was asking questions on the podcast. It kind of, one thing I really struggled with is like a lot of the people I had on were sort of jack of all trades, like Danny Vega. He's, um, he's a father, he's a stoic philosopher, he's an entrepreneur, he's jacked, <laughs> he's, um, you know, an expert in carnivore, he's um, an expert in, in homeschooling. Um, and so like I, had him on and I almost, I almost didn't know what to do with the episode, right? Like I'm <laughs> bouncing between topics. I'm asking him about everything. Um, so I couldn't have like a dedicated episode or series on like child childhood or, or having children or something, because I had all these guests who like, I, I was asking about everything, which was great. They're great guests. They're fantastic. Um, but I guess I, I just didn't like the voice I was developing. I wasn't getting nearly and and you know maybe i do care me about metrics more than i claim um because the episode downloads were not great and then i felt 
personally insecure about being as vulnerable as I was being um, publicly, just to be totally honest with you. I think some of the topics, like I thought I could be super honest and open with people listening, but I did feel myself holding myself back and like getting really nervous for episodes and like questioning myself if I wanted to talk about things while recording. So yeah, that's kind of why it died. Um, and I, I, you know, slowly phased out and stopped, stopped producing episodes. Mm. Now we, we have this kind of idea in our heads that like, don't quit power through, you know, you mm. got to get it done. And I, I just, I really disagree with that. You and I were talking offline a few days ago and we we're kind of discussing, you know, that, that podcast and the demise and what happened and everything. And I, I kind of told you about the things that I've quit recently. And, and these are like a bunch of activities that I really like. Um, I quit skiing, I quit golf, I quit homebrewing, I gave away and donated all my stuff and I don't do those things anymore. And I got a bunch of messages from people like, Oh, don't quit, don't quit. And it's like, but I love ice hockey and I love doing boundless body radio and I love riding my bike and I don't want to spend my life doing things that I like at the expense of doing things that I love. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think that's a really great example. And it's the reason why in one of our episodes, we recommended taking advantage of, you know, a host like Buzzsprout who offers, you know, free hosting for a certain number of episodes for like 90 days and try it for 90 days. And you may find mm -hmm. after 90 days that you made something that you really love. It's true to your why. And you should continue like you've done with Carnivore Cast. Let it grow. Let it evolve. Let it monetize naturally. But, but, but there's other things in life that they're worth quitting. And it's not a bad thing. It allows you to spend yeah. more time and energy where your true passions are. And it's only by failing or, or, you know, discovering those things that you don't love that show you where those goalposts are. Yeah. Yeah. That's really well said. I couldn't agree more. I really think... Um, there is something to be said for sticking through things and sticking through the challenge and getting through the trough or the sucky parts. Um, but to, in order to do that, I think you also need to know when to quit things that aren't aligned with your why and your values or your original goal. So it, it is a trade-off and it's, it's not black and white whatsoever. Very well said. I'm just wondering if you have any last advice for somebody who wants to start a podcast, what you'd want to tell them. Yeah, I'd say do it. Um, try it out. Try whatever form you're you're comfortable with. If you want to start a YouTube channel, if you want to start something on, um, you know, Podbean or whatever one of these sites is, um, you know, just go for it. Have a few episodes, put it out there, see if people like it, see if you like it. More importantly, and uh, yeah, if if that's if that's something you want to continue with, then uh, then then keep it going and, and feel free to reach out. I'm I'm happy to offer any and all advice on running a podcast process, things like that. But I, I think um, it's something everyone should consider. Mm. To the listener, um, I can't agree more with what Scott just said. He is the most genuine and kind person and willing to help out anybody. So if there's something you need, you can always reach out to me or reach out to him. Um, he's been such a wonderful resource. Scott Mazinski, thank you so much for everything you've helped me with. Where do you want people to go to find you and find your podcast? Oh, thank you so much, Casey. Well, um, first of all, if you like this show, you should definitely check out Boundless Body Radio. <laughs> yes, shameless plug. Casey's Twenty bucks. Show. Twenty bucks. Uh, right there. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> I'll uh, I'll I'll send you your invoice. But <laughs> um, uh, other than that, um, yeah, Carnivore Cast is my show. You can find it on YouTube, any podcast app, um, Instagram. Feel free to reach out to me. Um, and yeah, uh, thanks thanks again for your time today, Casey. It's been a pleasure. Amazing. The pleasure's all mine. Always an honor. Thank you so much, Scott. We really appreciate you. Yep. Thank you for listening to the How to Make a Podcast podcast. If you enjoyed the episode, please leave us a rating and review on Apple. Also, be sure to check out the show that made all of this possible, Boundless Body Radio, where we provide tons of helpful and informative content, feature incredible guests, and talk all about health and wellness. Cheers, and thank you for joining us on the How to Make a Podcast podcast.